Our story starts in the land of Oz, where a dutiful and righteous man who goes by the name of Job lived. His life was one full of blessings. With seven sons and three daughters, his family was picture perfect. He also had plenty of riches, including thousands of sheep and camels, hundreds of oxen and donkeys, and more than just a handful of servants. Believing and sharing the gifts the Lord bestowed upon him, Job would often hold feasts on special occasions, inviting his sisters, community members, and others. Everything seemed to be a dream come true until the fateful moment God called the angels to present themselves, and Satan came along. Where have you come from? From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. You have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now, stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Very well then. Everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself you will not lay a finger. One peaceful day as Job sat, a messenger arrived huh? with dreadful news. Marauding Sabaeans had attacked, slaughtering the oxen and donkeys, leaving devastation in their wake. Meanwhile, a second messenger brought word of a raging fire that engulfed Job's sheep, leaving only sorrowful ashes behind. And then, huh? another messenger arrived, reporting the ruthless plundering of Job's camels by the Chaldeans, leaving him reeling from yet another devastating blow. As Job's heart weighed heavy with grief, the final blow struck like a thunderbolt. A mighty wind, born of the desert's fury, swept through his son's abode, shattering its very foundation. Job, stricken with grief and disbelief, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell to the ground in worship. Despite the unfathomable loss, he uttered words of faith and surrender. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. It didn't even stop there. Satan also cursed Job with painful sores from head to toe. And Job could only soothe them by scraping himself with broken pottery. His wife was baffled, even asking him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God already and die. Job's friends, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, set out to visit him only to start weeping and faltering under the heaviness of what had befallen their just and kind friend. Fighting his despair and almost losing, Job started wishing he was never born. Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? After some time, even Job's friends left him on his own, questioning his personality and integrity, and even questioning if God had really abandoned him. Job cried out, how long will you torment me and crush me with words? In the midst of his despair, however, the Lord asked Job some things to reveal a deeper truth. Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. It was like a sip of cold water on the hottest of summer days. It was like Job came back to his senses and felt an ever strong urge to preserve and keep the faith. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. After God spoke to Job, God addressed Eliphaz the Temanite and his companions, expressing his displeasure at their false words about him, unlike his faithful servant Job. To atone, God instructed Eliphaz, Beldad, and Zophar to bring seven bulls and seven rams for a burnt offering. They were to present these offerings before Job and seek his intercession and prayer. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar promptly obeyed God's command, presenting the offerings to Job as directed. God accepted Job's prayer on behalf of his friends and in response restored his fortune twofold, abundantly blessing him. Those who had shunned Job during his trials now gathered around him, offering him comfort, consolation, and support. In the latter years of his life, 
Job witnessed an abundance of blessings from God. With 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and a vast herds of oxen and donkeys. His prosperity surpassed even his former wealth. Moreover, Job was blessed with seven sons and three daughters, each more beautiful than the last. Job lived to a ripe old age of 240 years and passed away peacefully, leaving behind a legacy of faith, resilience, and the enduring blessings of God. In the ancient hills of Israel, there lived a young shepherd boy named David. David was the youngest of eight sons, growing up in the historic town of Bethlehem. While other boys his age played in the village, David spent his days taking care of sheep in Bethlehem's hills. He wasn't just watching sheep, he was their protector. With just a simple sling and a trusted staff, David kept his flocks safe from danger. He fought off lions and bears, protecting his flock with bravery and faith. When he wasn't with his sheep, David loved playing his harp. He played so beautifully that even the river's flow slowed as if to hear every note. One day, when David was just a young teenager, the prophet Samuel visited his house. God had instructed Samuel to anoint the next king of Israel from among Jesse's sons. So he examined each of Jesse's sons. After meeting seven of them, oh. Samuel still hadn't found the one God had chosen. Are these all the sons you have? Samuel asked Jesse. Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. When David arrived, the Lord spoke to Samuel, saying, This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David, signifying God's selection of him as the future king. Meanwhile, in the valley of Elah, a shadow began to stretch across the land. But it wasn't the mountain casting darkness. It was a giant, Goliath of Gath. He was a fearsome warrior, standing over nine feet tall and surpassing the strength of a bear. For 40 days, Goliath taunted Israel's army, daring any soldier brave enough to challenge him. But courage was scarce, and King Saul's army stood paralyzed with fear. One day, David brought food to his brothers in the army. He couldn't believe that everyone was afraid of Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I will face him trusting in God. The Lord who saved me from the fierce lions will save me from this Philistine. With King Saul's reluctant blessing, David stepped onto the battlefield, choosing five smooth stones from a stream. Goliath mocked David saying, Am I a dog that you come at me with a stone? But David responded boldly. You come against me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin? But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Come here to me. I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the fields. As Goliath charged forward, David swiftly responded. With unwavering determination, he selected a stone, placed it in his sling, and launched it with all his strength. The stone soared through the air, striking Goliath squarely on the forehead. The giant warrior collapsed to the ground, defeated. The Philistine army panicked and fled. Their champion brought down, not by armor, but by the power of God, through the faith of a shepherd boy. David would later become Israel's greatest king. But his victory over Goliath teaches us something timeless. True strength isn't measured by size or might, but by the size of one's faith. What giants are you facing today? In a quiet corner of the world, a child was born to the Virgin Mary through the power of the <laughs> Holy Spirit. This child was Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah prophesied to save his people. From an early age, Jesus displayed wisdom and compassion beyond his years. By the time Jesus was 30, oh. he began his public ministry, proclaiming the arrival of God's kingdom and offering the promise of salvation. He selected 12 disciples from various walks of life, from fishermen to tax collectors, <laughs> to join him on a mission that would change history. 
He inspired many through his teachings and revealed his divine powers with miracles like healing the sick, oh. giving sight to the blind, and even raising the dead. But not everyone welcomed his teachings and miracles. Oh. The religious leaders felt their power was threatened by Jesus' growing influence. They began to plot against him and even conspired with Judas, one of Jesus' 12 disciples. Despite having walked beside Jesus for years, Judas agreed to betray <laughs> him for just 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. On the night of the Last Supper, Jesus gathered with his disciples. He took bread and wine, declaring, This is my body. This is my blood. Instituting the new covenant. After the meal, knowing his hour had come, he led a few of the apostles to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Overwhelmed, Jesus knelt down to pray, accepting his fate. That same night, Judas led the guards to Jesus. With a seemingly innocent kiss, Judas signaled to the guards, sealing Jesus' fate. The next day, Jesus was brought before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate who questioned Jesus but found no fault in him. Pilate actually wanted to release Jesus, but the crowd cried out for his crucifixion, demanding his death. The very people he had come to save had turned against him. Unable to withstand the pressure, Pilate reluctantly gave the order for Jesus to be crucified. The soldiers mocked Jesus, placing a crown of thorns on his head and forcing him to carry a wooden cross up Golgotha. Once at the top, the soldiers nailed his hands and feet to the cross. For hours, Jesus hung there, enduring unimaginable pain. Even in his agony, he prayed for his executioners, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As he breathed his last, the earth quaked, and darkness covered the land, as if all creation mourned his death. Jesus' body was laid in a tomb, sealed by a heavy stone and guarded by soldiers. For three days, the tomb remained undisturbed, as the world mourned, but death could not hold him. On the third day, the stone was rolled away, and the tomb was empty. Jesus had risen, just as he promised. After rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others over a span of 40 days, reaffirming his teachings and the importance of faith. Before ascending into heaven, he promised the coming of the Holy Spirit, a divine presence that would guide believers and lay the foundation for Christianity.